Sheldon. Are you turning it on? Okay. All right, we'll call the meeting to the order to order and start with the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The mission of the Harrisonville Cass R9 School District is to provide excellence in education. Okay, we will move on to the approval of the agenda. Uh, so we need to uh, move uh, item 3D, which was uh, previously placed on the consent agenda. Agenda. Uh, it's an advertising agreement for scoreboards. It's been removed from the consent agenda. Uh, and placed as item 8B at the request of a board member. Okay. We need to I'm, approve the mm, no. agenda as amended. I was going to move to approve the Very agenda good. as amended. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. We need to approve the consent agenda. I'll make the motion that we approve the consent agenda as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Student recognition. Let's see here. Who have we got coming up? Uh, Cass Career Center. Cass Career Center. Center. Okay. All right. CTE month is in February. And we have several of our um, top flying students here who go out of the right. Come on up, guys. Um, they're here to tell you a little bit about how CTE, CTE programs in high school have impacted them, as well as participating in CTSOs. I know Ethan's here. And I don't know if Michael's here from DECA. Oh, we've got a fill in for Michael. <laughs> um, these kids really go above and beyond all throughout the year running a CTSO. CTSO is a student-led organization such as FFA, DECA, and Skills USA. They don't get time in their day. This is all above and beyond stuff that they're doing. So on top of keeping the outstanding academic records that they have, they are also going above and beyond all throughout the year to help ensure that our other students get some really fantastic opportunities. So I've got here Caleb McCommon with Skills USA. He's also part of the EMT program. I've got Gabrielle Stoddard here, who is with CSI. I think you guys have had the joint pleasure of hearing from Gabby before, um, and also is a skills officer. Then we have Caitlin Jungling, who is with FIRE this year, EMT last year, who is also a skills officer. And then we've got Ethan Cole here with FFA. And then we've got Grace filling in tonight, it sounds like. Yes. Thank you for stepping in for Michael. She's also a DECA officer. They want to tell you a little bit about some of the fantastic things you all have supported them with in their time here. So come on up, guys. <coughs> uh, hi, my name is Gabby Stoddard. I am the District Vice President of Skills USA. I am in the CJCSI program, which I have talked about here before. Um, that program has probably been one of the biggest blessings of my life. I actually viewed and went and visited CAS, and I was planning on being in the nursing program. And then when I saw the CJCSI program, I got really excited, and I decided I would try to be in that. So I wrote my little letter, and I got accepted. And it's been really exciting, and ever since then, it's paved a new path in my life. Um, I actually decided to be a forensic scientist, and I will be attending Wichita State next year and majoring in forensic science. I'm very excited for that. Um, it's really prepared me for the workforce. I have a resume, I have a cover letter, I have a thank you letter, um, and I'm really excited for that, and it makes it transitioning a lot easier. And Skills has really helped with my relationships with people and learning how to talk in front of people and forming those relationships with everybody. It's been a really big blessing. Thank you. <laughs> my name is Kayla McCommon, and I'm also a Skills USA District Officer. Uh, for me, Skills uh, has really just helped improve my professionalism. It's really built up a lot of things that we do there are geared towards our professional careers in the future. So everything in the fire and EMT classes that we do, we have uniform days, and everything is just geared toward getting us ready for going out into the workforce. So that's been really awesome. And with the integrated a academics, they, like Gabby said, they really just help push us to that next level of 
being as great as we can and standing out in the workforce in the future. So, thank you. Okay, so I'm the West Central District Skills USA secretary, and so Skills USA has really allowed me to grow as a person. Last year or the year before, I probably would never have been standing in front of you. So it has allowed me to become way more confident in myself. I've been able to experience what the workforce is like with competitions I did last year in EMT. And then another thing the CAS Career Center has allowed me to do is cert uh, certifications. So um, going out of high school, I already have all the basic certifications or planning on having all the basic certifications for uh, working as a firefighter and then being certified as an EMT, which is, most 18-year-olds don't have that. So I will already be a step above, and so I can just go straight to a paramedic in college, and I can get that. And then uh, hopefully I'll be out of college by when I'm, you know, 20. And then most people going to this career don't even aren't even starting out <coughs> school yet. So Cass Career Center has really just allowed me to grow, and like it's given me that step above everyone else trying to become firefighter, paramedic kind of people, because I already have the certifications I need. So now I'm one step ahead. So yeah. Okay, my name is Grace McLaughlin, and I am the Public Relations Officer for DECA. So in DECA, I have learned lots of communication skills and the importance of community involvement, as well as marketing and advertising and things of that sort. So because of DECA, I have learned what field I want to go into after high school, and as well as what I want to do after high school, but it prepares me for opportunities that I can get outside. Thank you all. Um, my name is Ethan Cole, and I'm serving as the chapter president for the Cows Career Center and FFA chapter. Our chapter is celebrating its 70th year this year and consists of 132 members from Harrisville, Lee Summit, and Raymore Peculiar. Our chapter has been had an extremely busy year thus far, filled with community service, leadership development, agricultural development, and fun activities. We are proud that we have put in over 225 hours of community service this year. Projects we have done include food packing for the State Fair Food and Security Day, cutting corn stalks for a town festival in Lee Summit, scraping old paint and repainting a house shelter and picnic tables at the Lord's Park, picking up trash at the City Park in North Park, and collecting packaging and shipping care packages for our soldiers overseas. In addition, this spring we will be rebuilding part of the horse arena at North Park and offering a petting zoo at the Early Childhood Center in April. Another part of our chapter is improving leadership in our members. We have had members participate in Area Leadership Conference, National FFA Convention, Area and District FFA Speech Contests, Green Hand Motivational Conferences, and Youth FFA Leadership Day at the State Capitol. In addition, this upcoming summer, members will attend State FFA Leadership and Washington Leadership Com Conference. Members can apply leadership through chapter office positions, committees, chairs, and serving beyond the local level. This year, our FFA member, Michelle Mars, serves as the Area FFA Reporter. We have changed to bi-monthly meetings where our members are used are using parliamentary procedure to accomplish the, the business of the chapter. A major aspect of our organization is training the future of agriculture, food, and natural resource industries. We take the skills we learn in 12 agricultural courses as well as the experiences we receive in our supervised agriculture experience projects to prepare ourselves to solve upcoming issues in our industry. Throughout the summer, many of our members take ag, mechanic, horticulture, vegetable, crop, and livestock projects to many local district and state shows. Last year, we had over 70 members exhibit projects at the District FFA Fair and Missouri State Fair. In addition, we work on career, career development contests throughout the year. Our horse judging team complete, competed in the Northwest Missouri State University Contest in October, <laughs> where the team placed second out of 25, and member Skylar Light placed first high individual. This spring, we will have over 40 students compete in career development contests. We also attend many industry field trips to learn about the agriculture industry. This year, students have toured six local farms and agribusinesses, the GM Fairfax plant where they produce the Chevy Malibu, Lakeside Natural Resource Center, and, tour and wildlife, re wildlife Rehabilitation. Behind the scenes of Cabela's, and will attend the Western U.S. Farm Show in KC in February. This summer, we have many members attend agriculture academies to develop their agricultural knowledge and leadership abilities. Some of these academy academies include the Missouri High Max Academy, Precision Agriculture Academy, Area Officer Institute, and Missouri Hype Academy. 
Our FFA chapter also tries to have fun activities through the year for members to enjoy. Some of these activities this year have included laser tag at Paradise Park, ice skating at Crown Center, a ski trip later in February to Snow Creek, and bowling at Aaron's in Belton later this month. We hold our 70th annual FFA banquet on Wednesday, May 1st at the Harrisville High School School Cafeteria starting at 7 p.m. We'd be proud to have you and any guests attend. Thank you for con your continued support of the Cass Career Center Our Culture Program and FFA chapter. Thank you. Thank you. Before you guys sit down, before you guys sit down could we get a group picture of Can you, you come please? up front here? <laughs> Don't be shocked. <laughs> like, no. Oh, you're okay. <clears throat> oh, Susan. Oh, Susan. Yep. Mm -hmm. Welcome to stay if you would like. You can also move on, whichever you prefer to do. <laughs> we want to try to get her back real quick. Nope, she's on. She's on? Can you see us? She's lost it on her no. side. Mm. Can you hear me? Yeah. I'm can sure. Me? Yeah, and I can see us down here. I don't know why you can't. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Good, Good job. job. Well, we have a board member in Florida, so she's Skyping okay. in from, from her Florida home. <laughs> All right. We will now move on to audience delegations. Nope. Uh, nope. We have oh. the high school students. High school. Oh, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. The high school will be recognized now. Good evening. So I am um, going to present to you our two uh, students of the month for January, Harrisville High School. And this month, the staff chose Grace McLaughlin and Ethan Cole. Come on up. <laughs> what a surprise. We're doing double duty tonight. So. Very convenient. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't planned. <laughs> I'm going to talk a little bit about Miss McLaughlin here first. Um, Grace is involved in DECA, SAD, Peer Helpers, the dance team, NHS, NTHS, and Music Makers. Uh, when I sat down and talked with her, she told me that her plans after high school are either to attend the University of Colorado in Boulder, hashtag jealous, <laughs> or Pace University in Westchester, New York to major in communications. Uh, she told me that her favorite part of high school has been making the lifelong relationships that she's developed with teachers and other students. Uh, when I talked to a few of her teachers, this is what they told me about Grace. Uh, Mr. Matthews said that uh, Grace is a wonderful young lady. She serves the Harrisonville Music Makers as a dance captain, the captain of the Silver Sensations, and many other school organizations. Grace is intelligent, always ready to work, and has a remarkably even keel temperament, perfect for someone who is placed in a peer leadership role. Grace has been a joy to direct these four years. I will be sad to see her go as she graduates and moves on to the next phase of her life. And then Mrs. Devenny. Uh, told me that Grace is a delightful young woman. She's thoughtful and mature, more than her 18 years would ever indicate. She has a perceptiveness about her that allows her to see others as they really are. She's also so much fun. Uh, when Grace is around, I know there will be giggling and laughter and smiles. I've thoroughly enjoyed having her in class this year. And then Mr. Bebout said, over the past three years, I've gotten to know Grace very well. She's displayed how hard of a worker she is. At times, she may get frustrated for a short while, but it doesn't last long. She always finds a way to persevere. However, this is far from Grace's best quality. She is extremely generous and truly has a heart of gold. I've seen on numerous times Grace going out of her way to encourage and help others out when they are down. Ms. Grace McLaughlin. And then our young man is Mr. Ethan Cole. Uh, Mr. Cole is involved in FFA, which he's the president of. Um, he's also been involved in academic club, NHS, NTHS, and soccer all four years. Um, Ethan told me that his plans after high school are to attend Judson University in Elgin, Illinois, which is just outside of Chicago. Uh, his plan is to major in architectural design and play soccer. Uh, he told me that his favorite part of high school has been the interactions that he has had with his teachers while at HHS. 
uh, when I talked to a few of his teachers. Uh, Mr. K told me that uh, Ethan has a natural curiosity, which is demonstrated by his knowledge in a wide variety of subjects. It has been an absolute pleasure to have him in class and get to know him. Uh, Mrs. Trewilliger said that Ethan has always been and will always be a favorite of mine. Since the day he entered HHS, he's been determined to learn all that he can in and out of the classroom. He is a hard worker, compassionate, and a great person overall. There have been a few days in the last four years where we didn't run into each other in passing or on purpose and chat about school or life. Ethan is a great representative of Harrisonville High School, and I am so grateful to have had the opportunity to get to know him. And then Mr. McGoffin said that Ethan is an outstanding young man in my experience. As a student, he is dedicated and driven. He is talented and hardworking. As an individual, Ethan has a clear sense of identity and a purpose which drives him to live with upstanding conduct and consideration. I appreciate all that Ethan is and is becoming, and I am proud of the progress and purpose his life has shown. Mr. Ethan Cole. Thank you. Thank you. And again, you, you guys don't have to stay if you don't want to. <laughs> Moving on to audience delegations. I do believe we have some signed up. We do. Before anybody gets up to speak, just as a reminder to everybody that's coming up to speak, per board policy BDDH1, only items from the agenda may be discussed. No individual will be permitted to speak more than one time during this period. The Board of Education has set a time limit of three minutes for this meeting. Um, Secretary Brooker will raise her hand to signal when you have 30 seconds left. The Board of Education will listen to all who wish to address an agenda item, but board members will not address or comment on any concerns at this time. So with that being said, uh -huh. first we have Michelle Wilson. Good evening. Um, several of us are here before you tonight to ask that you listen to our concerns about the current privilege system at HHS that allows students to opt out of their finals based upon attendance. Um, we'd like you to hear us review our concerns with the policy, discuss it, and come back hopefully in February meaning to vote upon possibly making changes to the needs of students that are negatively affected due to their health and or life events. Um, for us personally, in the beginning of October, our family found out just how this policy was affecting students through the experience with our daughter, Madeline. Immediately, we felt it to be prejudicial towards students with health issues and injuries, so I reached out to other parents to find out their thoughts, opinions, and own personal experiences. I wanted to find out what their positions were and see if I might just be kind of overreacting because it was affecting me personally. What I found were numerous parents that, who agreed that it was wrong. I've even heard from educators who disagree with the policy but have said that they would not speak out because they don't want to see, be seen as contradicting their employer's stance. Please know that none of us disagree that attendance needs to be a priority, nor do we disagree that the district has had an issue with this in the past. Our own daughter contributed to that last year due to the morning health battles she was facing before she was diagnosed. It is still hard for her in the mornings, but through our knowledge of what is going on with her, she's being treated even recent, as recent as an appointment yesterday. Therefore, we put before you our letter of what we're asking when we submitted this request for it to be discussed at this meeting. As we stated in our letter, we're asking that if a student has documentation of an illness or an injury, such as attending a medical appointment or has had a life event, such as a death in the family, that they should still remain eligible for the, for the privilege. This can even be tied to their GPA or grade in the class to ensure it isn't being abused. Some of the reasons that we felt need to be considered are health should be considered a higher standard than attendance, so not to encourage students to attend school even when injured or ill. Students with a luck of good health are receiving a privilege that students who are not lucky enough to have are, in a sense, being discriminated against. The majority of students that are requesting this change due to medical reasons actually qualify under Section 504. Do we really want all of these students to request a 504 accommodation for this reason? It would put an undue burden on the district. However, the majority of families I have spoken with are willing to go in this direction if necessary. And instructional time is being cited for students and parents. And I'll wrap up. We are, um, we are simply asking that you please review and make changes to the policy to allow 
equality among our students and ensure that the correct message is sent to our students. Thank you. Next we have Madeline Wilson. Um, good evening. Uh, my name is Madeline Wilson. I'm a freshman at HHS. Um, I'm here to share about how the current opting out of finals policy has affected students like me. Um, I'm a student who wants a good education at HHS and in the future. Uh, I was in HATS in eighth grade and now working to be a student that graduates HHS with as many dual credits as possible, along with extracurricular activities and programs, programs such as debate and cheer. I tell you so you know I'm not just trying to be a lazy student which I've heard some adults say about students wanting this privilege. Honestly, students like me are interested in this reward program just like anyone would be. We're not on reward systems to get us to do our work, so of course we're interested in this. However, because of the current policy requirements, I'll never achieve it because I have a crippling autoimmune disease, which has even left me with temporary partial blindness once, which means I miss school for health issues and doctor's appointments a lot. Um, yes, I know working hard will pay off in the end, but what about now? Why do students that show up to school every day but not work hard get a privilege, of, get a privilege and someone like me who misses days due to my health, yet I carry an almost 4.0 GPA, get nothing? So my health, which I have no control over, is held against me. Right now I can almost hear you say, life isn't fair. Trust me, I get that with my health issue as well as being the youngest of my siblings. I know all about how nothing is fair. However, I've also learned from my father and other employers that they'd rather have an employee miss work due to an illness or injury on occasion that gives 100% than an employee who shows up every day and does the bare minimum, which is what the attendance policy is saying, showing up is most important. To be clear, showing up does matter, but doing your best should be priority. I mentioned the time I woke up with a partial blindness. Most students wouldn't have questioned missing school that day, for me, while I was confused, hurting, and scared, I was still getting ready for school. I had to go because of wanting to achieve opting out. Unfortunately, my mother realized what was going on, and she was insisting on going to doctors, um, emergencies, and memorial services must be excused. Obviously, she was wrong because I'm standing here. Even though she insists my health is more important than the school's policy, I'm still angry for missing that day. For me, it was just another unfair opportunity um, I'm faced with due to my health. Please realize that the choices of the school do affect us and our families in many ways. Students like me who are high achievers will even allow our health to suffer. It's like a dancer who continues to dance with a broken toe. Athletes that will compete despite a concussion. We're driven to achieve our best and do better than our best. I want you to hear us, hear us students ha that having an injury, disability, health challenge, or loss in a fam of a family member should not mean we do not get to be equal with this policy. These are things that we cannot control, and therefore we are being discriminated against because of our genetics, an accident or injury that is wrong. Legally, no person should be discriminated against, and a disability is one of them. I am one of them. Therefore, I ask that you please allow students like me to have an equal playing field when it comes to the opting out of finals reward program. Thank you. So, and next, we have Jerry Ann Sasonis. Hello, and good evening. Um, I don't have a lot to say because they have spoken on behalf of us for the majority of it. But for those of you that don't know me, I do have three kids here currently at the high school, and I have one that graduated last year in 2018 with very top honors, but not 100% attendance. Um, a couple other points that we have talked to and things that you all probably may or may not be aware of that we have done, but we have contacted outside of our realm, um, the National Disabilities Rights Network and the ACLU as well, and both. Uh, organizations have felt and agree that this is not a uh, fair policy. It is discriminatory on many lines, and they are opening investigations. So with that being said, um, I am speaking more so to kids that are also being sick at school and going to school while they're sick. I will personally attest and tell you outright, I have kids of that myself. I fall in that category. They're in fever-free for 24 hours, so they're going back to school. However, today, one of my daughters was sent back home from her coach, she made it through her school day, but her coach says, you don't need to be here, you need to be at home resting. So when we have our educators recognizing that, I think it's really poor that we have a policy that my kids want to be here at school every day because they are those achieving students that maintain a 4.0, which they all have at this point, and yet they're penalized for missing school. 
So um, I could go on. There's not enough time in three minutes for me to go because I do feel very passionate about this. And when I am passionate about it, not only do I get nervous, but I get very upset and the mama bear comes out of me. So there's just not enough time to cover it all. But thank you for your time and I hope you all will listen. Next we have Erin Cooper. Hello and good evening. I am terrified of public speaking, but I am here because I have three kids in the district. Um, <clears throat> um, when this meeting started and you read the mission statement, and I also found the mission statement of Har Harrisonville High School to be similar, um, I don't believe that this policy promotes those missions at all. Um, I received an email on July 13th explaining or introducing this policy and all it spoke to was that the dist or the school had lost accreditation and therefore I'm assuming funding. I'm sorry I'm so nervous. Um, and I feel like all this policy does is attempt to get the funding and accreditation back which to us parents says that money is more important than anything else. Um, as they said there's so much stuff I can go on and on about but I won't because I'm not sure it will do much good in only three minutes. Um, but there's some of us that are doing everything we can to make sure that our kids are doing what they need to do, working hard, and then to fight our children who want to go to school sick or injured is a battle a parent shouldn't have to fight. Um, I have a kid on a, <coughs> one kid on a 504 plan who I've been told is protected from this policy because of her 504 plan. And I have another kid with a learning disability who doesn't want to be on a 504 plan, but if I have to go that route, it's going to be my only choice because otherwise I fight tears when she has the flu and wants to go to school or when she has a dentist appointment or when she has to go get her medication refilled every six months and we have to see a doctor for that. So um, please hear us. Please know that we have hardworking kids who are doing everything they can to have good behavior and good grades and they aren't lazy and they aren't looking for a way not to take a test. They just want to do their best and follow the mission statements that you guys have given to them. Thank you. Uh, next we have Callie Justice. Hi, my name is Callie Justice. Um, I've had three kids graduate from the school already. I have two currently in the school. Um, I have a senior and I have a sophomore. My circumstances are a little bit different. Um, I have a daughter, she's a sophomore and she's a wrestler. Um, Nani has been approved to be able to miss school to go with her wrestling. She wrestles for Team USA, which is an incredible opportunity and a great journey that we've been on. So last year, here's your example of the time frame that she missed. 40 days of school, she was in Sweden for 21 days. She was in Canada for 10 days, plus training in Phoenix, New York, Vegas, Oklahoma, Texas, and Pennsylvania. She maintained a 3.8 GPA through that time frame. This year, her GPA slacked a little bit. She's at a 3.6. She just got back from Japan um, competing for Team USA. Um, Nani's not able to opt out of anything. We were kind of referred to as it's the same thing as maternity leave. So she goes away. She is not there. Everybody else is still doing the work. So she shouldn't get the bonus as she's coming back. So in my opinion, she goes away. She trains for 12 hours a day prior to competition. She competes. She trains for 12 hours a day afterwards. She's still able to do all of her homework. She's still able to get to maintain that GPA. She wants to be an anesthesiologist. She's had 13 full ride offers right now for wrestling. Um, I've had conversations with Mr. Wiegers about it. Um, what is that education going to do for her? It's going to get her a co or the wrestling part. I don't have to pay for college. That's a bonus. Um, the opportunities, the traveling, everything she has. When she goes and competes, she doesn't get a bonus for just showing up. She doesn't get a medal. So my son that has a 2.2 GPA opted out of three finals. My daughter that right now has a 3.6 GPA, zero. You know why? Because she competed for Team USA in Japan and missed nine days of school so far this year. A little bit different scenario than somebody having a sickness. 
So we've been told that it'll be a little bit of an exception for her to walk at graduation. We're hoping she doesn't walk anyway because that's the Olympics, so we hope she won't be here. But um, <laughs> we're well on our way to that. But as far as prom, as far as opting out, so I believe this is excellence, and we should support excellence rather than giving medals for just attendance, giving bonuses for attendance, no matter what. Thank you. And we have Casey Wilson. <coughs> I'm Casey Wilson. Madeline is my daughter who spoke a moment ago. <coughs> and my wife and the others have covered a great deal of it. But when we talk about our mission statement, Harrisonville School District is, wants to achieve excellence in education. Currently at the high school, we're giving you excellence in showing up. As I spoke with Mr. Minching a few weeks ago, <clears throat> I don't know about you all and your children, but I'm raising my children to be successful, productive adults. As an upper level manager for the last 30 years, I'm not looking for the kid that shows up and does nothing. It's not about showing up. Showing up's a piece of it. But the academics or the abilities and their work ethic it's got to be tied together. And I feel like <clears throat> we're sending a message to our CD students, show up every day, you're successful. Well, I'm telling you what, when they interview with my company, that's going to last about a week. I don't want to raise my kids to be just show-ups. I want to raise them to be successful. I totally agree with the attendance issue. My kids will tell you I'm harder on them than I am anybody about showing up. I think Maddie even mentioned that. <coughs> You got to show up and you got to put up. You got to take care of it all. And so, one of my main issues was not only the fact that my daughter, according to ACLU and disability rights, is being discriminated against because she has a debilitating illness or condition. Um, <laughs> it's that we're not raising our kids to be productive, successful adults. And I think as a parent, and I hope as an educator, we can all agree that our job is not just to get them through school. Our job is to teach them, to educate them, to give them morals, to give them work ethic so that they can go out in the world and be successful. So right now, your mission statement, excellence in showing up is my opinion. I'd like to see it get back to excellence in education because that's part of the reason we moved to Harrisonville was because of the school district. Thank you. That's everyone. Is that all we had? Okay. Thank you. All right. Moving on to the partner organization <coughs> at the Harrisonville PTO. <coughs> I'm the president, and I have Paula Wooten, vice president, and Laura Coffey, our treasurer. Um, Stacy Billings, our secretary, could not be here tonight. So we were just going to go real quick over like what we've been up to, what, how our sale went, that sort of thing. So I'm going to talk about our sale. Um, we This year was our biggest sale since 2009, according to Frontier Bag, because I didn't have that information. But um, we're still doing $10 a roll like we always have. Um, we did over $90,000 in sales, and that was our goal, was 90000 So that's about a five to $6,000 increase from previous years. Um, we had seven students that sold over $1,000 worth of bags. One student sold 160 rolls, and that was the most I've ever heard of. But <laughs> yes. Um, he was a kindergartner, so hopefully he keeps oh selling. <laughs> um, the new thing we did this year is we introduced the uh, green bag instead of the wildcat bag, and 50 cents of every bag of every roll sold went directly to a playground fund, and so we raised a thousand dollars with that. And so since we had some overage from our sale, plus our playground fund money, we have 
been able to purchase some fun things in addition to our regular budget items. So, so far this year, we have purchased an all-inclusive swing for the ECC. Um, and we have ordered, but it's not up yet, a bucket swing for HES, which is kind of a similar to the all-inclusive. You know, kids can that have trouble with balance and stuff can get in the bucket swing. Um, we have purchased paint and stencils for the blacktop that can be shared amongst all the elementary schools. Um, we got McEwen a movie license, and we are discussing a rock wall. A rock wall. <laughs> so, um, in the we want to remind everybody that the trash bags are for sale. You guys too. Trash <laughs> bags are for sale at HES and McEwen all year long. You can buy them in the office. Fabulous! I'll be by. <laughs> yeah. I was just going to touch on what we have uh, completed in the first semester. We implemented the parent representatives from each class in an attempt to increase our attendance and participation in PTO, and that was pretty successful. Um, we also hosted our first meeting, and participation at the meeting had increased significantly, and we don't know if that was because of what we had implemented with the um, parent representative for the classroom, but it was a positive, definitely. Um, we also uh, hosted a booth at the Fall Festival where we sold some trash bags there and kind of got the word out about the trash bag sales <coughs> more. Um, we provided dinner uh, during the parent-teacher conferences for the teachers there at the schools. And we also continue to fill the teacher appreciation jars in their uh, workroom. We do that on a monthly basis with snacks and treats. Uh, we also uh, bought the supplies and the paint for the ECC blacktop project where we used the stencils and um, we supervised some middle school uh, kindness committee students for a uh, fun day of painting for that. Um, upcoming this semester, we are going to, when the weather breaks, we're going to finish painting at ECC, um, that project there on the playground, and also. Um, uh, buy more paint and organize a painting project for the HES blacktop. Uh, we're going to host uh, the art fair by serving ice cream sundaes, and um, we'll do that at all three schools in the spring. And then um, also currently discussing a student directory project that we're going to um, work with uh, with HES. Uh, and then the uh, hosting the end of the year teacher appreciation luncheons at all three schools. That happens in May. Uh, where we will also purchase teacher appreciation gift for all the staff. And our own ongoing goal is to recruit and get more parents involved in PTO. I am Laura Coffey. Um, let you get a copy of the budget there. I'm talking about that. But uh, we set a budget every year at our April meeting. Um, staff are encouraged to attend, present ideas, request funds. And learn about some of the things that PTO is doing. We have exciting things we're involved in in each school. Um, some of the things that PTO helps with, we mentioned the art fair that's coming up in the spring at each of the elementary schools. Um, assemblies, Red Ribbon Week, um, Wild Cut of the Month Awards, uh, the fifth grade AR store, Fantasia, and a lot of things like that. One of the things that we're going to try to get into the budget this year is we're planning to add money for field days at each of the elementary schools. Um, they do a lot of fun things with inflatables, activities. There's some need for more equipment, items to make that a little bit more fun for the kids. And also for the music departments for each school because there's some things, some needs they have that I think that we can help out with and really see things done. Um, that's just some of the things that we're doing. You can kind of look at that. And Liberty Kids Store, that's an exciting one coming up in the spring. So just a little bit of everything. Thank you. Yes, Thank you very much. Thank you for all your hard work. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Good job. Uh, so each year, uh, the uh, 
The state of Missouri recognizes uh, the volunteers that serve on our school boards uh, throughout the state with the, with the state uh, school board recognition, recognition week. So um, you can see out front each of our schools adopted a board member and, and uh, decorated their area in front of them. So it w it's not normally this way, I promise. So, <laughs> um, but uh, also on behalf of, of the staff, we'd like to express our appreciation. We have a certificate from the Missouri School Boards Association and a, uh, and a gift certificate to Kurzweil's for each of you. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Gina Tina, Tina's trying to take yours. <laughs> yeah, too bad, Tina. Too bad, or Gina. Too bad, Gina. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So thank you all very much. It's uh, typically a thankless job, but we thank you and appreciate all your service for, especially for the, the school children of, of Harrisonville. So thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> All right, the MSBA delegate report. Okay, can you hear me okay? Yes. 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 All right, on your uh, board docs is the MSBA video update that's uh, a poster for you to review. Most of you have probably reviewed it, but just a couple of highlights. Um, <coughs> the MSBA president um, had a video conference that was posted with Governor Parsons this time. It was a little Acknowledgement. So we would like to acknowledge, uh, if you see on your packet there, uh, per board policy KH, uh, the, that uh, we had from the Peculiar Charitable Foundation, three AEDs, pads, and a wall cabinet. Uh, we're extremely grateful for that donation. So. Excellent. Um, Board of Education candidate filing update. So uh, filing uh, concluded today at 5 p.m. We had two vacancies. We had two uh, people sign up, Tina, uh, one of our incumbents, and uh, a, a new uh, person to the board will be Brittany Sexton. Brittany's uh, on the chamber board. She's very, uh, she's a graduate of, uh, of the, the high school and uh, is uh, very involved in the community, has small children and uh, very vested interest in the, in the school system. So we're excited to welcome her in April. Excellent. Very good. HHS attendance incentive. It's me again. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, so just just a reminder that um, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education's expectation is that we have 90% of our kids in attendance 90% of the time or higher. So last year we came to you with the uh, policy about being able to walk to graduation, which you voted on and approved. And then we also had an attendance incentive last year, a reward program, um, looking at some, what some other schools had done. I just want to give you an update of where we're at on that. Um, well, I'm going to back up a little bit. Last year, um, we finished uh, se about 77% of our students were above 90%. That was the lowest in the MRBC, um, the, with the exception of Excelsior Springs, uh, which has a very different demographic than what we have here in Harrisonville. Um, we've never made the 90-90 either. Um, right now, we're sitting at about 85% okay. that are above 90. So we're seeing some improvement. And we still have Still have ways to go. Um, at the end of first semester, uh, we had 138 students with perfect attendance that were able to opt out of the three finals. We had 294 students that were 97.5 to 99.9. They were able to opt out of two finals. We had 149 students that were 95 to 97.4% and were able to opt out of one final. Uh, so we had 581 students that were able to opt out of one or more finals. Um, then we had another 117 students that were between 90 and 94.9 percent attendance, which is where we want them to be, uh, for a total of 698 HHS students that were above 90 percent. Um, we know there's a correlation between attendance and academic achievement. I'll also let you know that uh, last year at the end of first semester, we had 252 failing grades across the board. Uh, at the end of first semester this year, we're down to 165. Yeah. Now, there's some other pieces of that puzzle, but I think attendance is part of it. Um, GPA has also gone up uh, le in the last year. Uh, in the last year, first semester, we were at 3.0. We're a little over 3.1 right now. Uh, we had 62.58% of our students that were above a 3.0 for first semester. Uh, that's a 4% increase from last year, first semester. So we're, at, we're slowly making improvements. Questions? Thanks for all you do. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Assessment and evaluation of district programs. Okay. In the month of December, we received uh, six point six million dollars in general fund in the general fund for property taxes received from the county, and one point seven million dollars for the debt service tax. We do have the two separate levies, of course. <clears throat> this is approximately 81% of the budgeted revenue year to date. Um, I will note that the county is remitting much faster this year than last. Um, we were only sitting at about 54% the same time period last year, so um, it's much better this year. We're, we're getting our money quicker. Uh, in the special revenue fund, um, we are at or near budget uh, for mid-year in the revenues based on the monthly allocations from the state. So everything's looking pretty, we should be around 50% and we're very close to that. <clears throat> the expenditures mirror closely those the period of last year. We're within $45,000 of last year and we're to the good. So expenditures are looking very much in line. Uh, total cash and investments are up uh, 12.7 million at end of month. Questions? Comprehensive School Improvement Plan. This is it. So, uh, just to give you a little bit more information, I mentioned earlier that our next uh, community conversation is March 5th with the focus on facilities and finance. Um, that'll be kind of the next piece uh, that we would like to incorporate in the CSIP. Um, and then uh, we'll look for the revision goal to be at the, at the end of the, the school year. Uh, but we look forward to some some good feedback. There were a lot of questions in our last uh, community <coughs> conversation about about those topics. We just didn't have a whole lot of time to uh, to go into it, so we want to narrow that down just a little bit. So, March fifth, and what was the time and location? Uh, six six o'clock. High school. At the high school. <coughs> Uh, the pre
preschool proposal. I'll make the motion that we approve the changes to the preschool oh, yeah. program as presented. Good call, Dean. <laughs> <laughs> we need a second. <laughs> I just so you saw the information items. I was just going with it. We need a second. Second. I know this is a silly question, but this is the same uh, exact proposal that we read last month, correct? Yes. No changes have been made. This is what Becky presented. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, computer science curriculum. We need a motion. I will make the motion to approve the computer science curriculum beginning with the 2019-20 school year as presented. Second. Discussion. Again, these are the Sounds like a great idea. Yeah, these were introduced last month, so. Okay. Any other discussion? I just want to say that this was a very well written proposal. A lot of good information in it, and also showing some of the community and uh, private sector support. Do, do we happen to know any kind of. I guess. Feelers out there, what is the response from like our sending schools to the network security and information class offering? Does it yeah, seem to be yeah. a. I think Jeanette's done some research on that. She's here. She can speak to it. Sure. <coughs> okay, the question was uh, sending school response. We've got Belton and Ray Peck that have said they're pretty much doing their own thing for that. However, all the smaller schools have been clamoring and pushing and hoping that we would get something up and going in that regard because they just can't support that themselves. If you look the, at the financial aspects of what it's going to cost for us to open the program, run the program, all that kind of thing, um, we've got some initial costs the first year that we won't have the following years. We only need seven sending school students total to be able to cover the cost of the initial year and then the years following that be roughly $1,850 cost which is less than one sending school student tuition. So we can do for our students what we really need to do here in Harrisonville and even have it paid for with the tuition of just one sending school student. Beside the cost of the teacher. Any other questions on that? All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, revised board policy IKFB. We need a motion. I'll make the motion to approve the revisions to board policy IKFB as presented. Second. <clears throat> Any discussion? Okay, motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> she need to wait just to say okay. There's a little bit of a delay, Gina. So after we're moving on, when your eye comes through, we're assuming you're in the affirmative. <laughs> I'll slow down. Um, moving on to business services. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> um, under business services, business benefit management system. We need a motion. I'll make the motion to contract with Benefit Direct to perform the benefits management function, including but not limited to employee benefit enrollment, <coughs> provide the software platform and manage supplemental <coughs> insurance, and 125 flex spending plan administration. Second. Kathy, you want to talk about it? <laughs> I can. <clears throat> well, currently we um, are not really under contract, but we have been working with American Fidelity since 2013. Um, they are a large company. They do uh, administer to um, a great number of school districts. And there is no cost per month or per year. Um, they do recoup those costs within the sale of those supplemental uh, policies that they sell, um, such as cancer, additional life, those types of things. So they're, they're saying they're recouping those costs that, it, that they are putting out. 
um, by those uh, selling those services to us. Well, you know, you kind of get what you pay for. So um, we've had lots of um, managers in and out several different times, probably, you know, at least one a year and, and maybe more. Um, so we have lost some, some continuity. We've lost some um, um, just being able to make sure that our, our numbers are right, um, our deductions are right, our before and after tax numbers are correct. Um, it, it's kind of a challenge sometime, sometimes. So as you know, we work with CBiz. They're our insurance um, consultants. And they asked us, they said, you know, we have a relationship with Benefits Direct and uh, some other entities. And we, they were just asking us, you know, do, would you want to go out and just look at these others? And as you saw by the attachment, they did. They went out and they um, talked to, what, 12, <laughs> I think, different companies and brought back those numbers and that information so that we could make an informed decision as to whether we want to make a change or not. And um, we did Benefits Direct's management came out. We, we took a look. Paul was included and Janelle, our benefits person, um, took a look at all those and said, you know, maybe we should talk with Benefits Direct and see exactly what they can offer us. And um, it, it looks really good. Their, their uh, platform will upload or import into our software. So what will happen there, they will actually come in on our open enrollment days. They will talk to every employee they will counsel them if they need it. They will know our benefits inside <laughs> out. They're going to know um, about our health insurance and any benefit we offer and be able to talk to them and advise as to what they may need. Um, and then once they do that, within their system, they will mark what things and what levels and, and their beneficiaries and all of that information. And then that will then be imported into our system, our financial system. So then that will eliminate Janelle having to hand key all of that information into our, our payroll software. So that is a plus, and, and several of them do that. I'm not saying they're the only ones, um, but they, they have a software platform that is used by other clients um, locally and, and that use our same software. Um, other than that, I, I mean, we're just looking, we, we do know, we wanted to make sure um, that you knew we were going from zero cost to a cost of about 9500 per year. They have, in order to get our, our business for the first year, they have said we, we want to waive that. We want to waive the first year fees and get us up and going. Um, but I, anyway, we do want to make sure you all understand that there will be a cost from year to year now if we should move that direction, if you all want to give us the permission to do that. So is it a one-year commitment at this point? Uh, we three. They want a three-year commitment up front. So the first year would be without fees at all, mm -hmm. and the next two at 9500 and then we would negotiate from there on. If I understood what I read earlier, the American Fidelity, one of the, one of the caveats to them doing it for free was that we were limited to only using products or services that they offer. If we move to this, would would that mean that any any company, maybe a local company, I don't know, but uh, any company that offered a product that we were interested in could offer that and it would integrate with their platform? Well, probably not. Now, we can suggest who we might want to go with, but they are every year going to go out and actually bid or take a look at all those supplemental policies. They don't just move from year to year with the same policies and make no changes. American Fidelity, a lot of theirs was just their products, their American Fidelity right. products, where Benefits Direct will go out and find the, the best, the most viable for our um, employees. So, and we, like I said, we can always suggest who we want them to go look at. So this, this should open up to our staff more choices. Yes. Okay. And the amount of money, if you were to put the time that Janelle spends inputting, how would that translate into dollars? Because I'm sure with all the employees in the school district, I mean, $9,500 sure. a year is probably the time she spends uh, doing at least. inputting. At least. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of data entry, a lot of management. Yeah. Okay. It's nice to have that consistency piece between our, our health plan and the, the other benefits. It's, it's really helpful to have that. That's CBiz really in, encompasses all that. So they're consistent. 
Any other discussion? All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. All right, gotcha, Gina. Okay, advertising agreement for scoreboards. We need a motion. I'll make the motion to approve the advertising agreement for scoreboard between the school district and hometown flooring as presented. Second. Second. Okay. Discussion. We, this, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to explain why this was on there. It was uh, the agreements were typically handled in July, I believe, but this one we had just received, so we just got it last month. So, so was the advertising provided during the fall season? I think so. Yeah. I thought I remembered. Seeing that. I, I'm assuming the answer to this is yes, but I, I read it, but I didn't compare it. Same agreement that we have for everybody. It's no, okay. At their appropriate level. Right, yeah, their level based on their right. tier. Yeah. Well, I guess my question is when they returned the signed agreement, had they already paid for paid. the services? Um, <coughs> did, did we not have one in July? With them. We had one for last year, yeah. correct? Last year, right. right. <coughs> when we reissued everything, they were a year-to-year -year okay. contract agreement. When we when we reissued that um, to them, it just didn't get back. It, I don't know if it just got missed, um, but I kept following up with them to see if they want wanted to continue the relationship, and they did. And they did. It yeah. just took that long to get the. I guess my question or statement is if it's not returned next year within 30 days, are they still going to get advertising on the scoreboard? Okay. That's what I wanted to know. Thank you. <laughs> Any other discussion? It is fair to note we had a lot going on in July, June and July of last year. So. Well, I'm talking about September, basically, and August and October, football time. All right, if there is no other discussion, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, we need a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. Second. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I just wanted to stay a little bit longer. I'm not ready to go home. Uh, all in favor? Hi. Hi. Waiting for Gina. Okay. Oh, she timed out. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting that time. All right. Thank you, guys.